Warning, the following video will contain strong language as seen in video from the fishing tournament. We got weights and fish! There we go! Oh, hell. Hell. Hey guys, this is Danny B. Now, ordinarily on my YouTube channel, I discuss the sport of NASCAR, but as you just saw in that video to start off this video, there was some serious controversy in the sport of professional fishing. Now, if you know a little bit about me and my background, you know that while I love NASCAR racing, while I love talking about NASCAR racing, I am not a racer myself. But when it comes to my competitive nature, well, ever since high school, I've been competing in at an amateur level competitive fishing. Now, primarily I fish in the sport of bass fishing. So whether that be as a co-angler in the major league fishing BFL divisions, or whether it be some local events in our pro craft boat on my local lake, Old Hickory Lake, or whether it's kayak bass fishing, which I've been competing in roughly, you know, in a few events here and there since well, around 2015, I believe is when I first started in kayak fishing. And, you know, over the course of my fishing career, I'm I'm no superstar and I never will be. But I mean, hey, I have done fairly good. Fifth place in uh, FLW BFL back in 2015. That is not easy to do by any means. And, you know, I got this fair and square. No cheating, no nothing. And I'm proud of this. But a big cheating scandal was just uncovered at a recent walleye fishing tournament in Lake Erie up in Ohio. Now again, this is coming from the POV of someone who's done bass fishing tournaments mainly in Tennessee, so I can't speak on everything with walleye fishing, but as a guy who likes to look at obscure sports, fishing being one of them, um, I, I feel like I can weigh in on this subject a little bit. I was going through my subscriptions today and I saw a video from the YouTuber Penguin Zero, aka Critical, um, aka Charlie, whatever you want to call him. But he actually did a video on this subject and the whole time he was reviewing this, he kept asking, how did they get caught? How did they know that they had done what they done? And we're going to, we're going to talk about what they did in just a second, but how did they know what they had done? Well, let's go into the details of the story a little bit. Jake Runyon and Chase Kaminsky, two fishermen from the state of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, they were a competitive team in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail in addition to other top walleye fishing tournaments over uh, the last few seasons. They've probably put together, I believe the number I saw was over $300,000 collectively, both in cash prizes and gear that includes a $100,000 boat package that they won in a tournament. I mean, these guys have won some serious money over the years, and now their entire reputation and how they won that is now up for question because it was found that they cheated in this past weekend's event on the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, and how they did it is what is the worst. So in the sport of fishing, we compete with the intent to let the fish back once we're done, because without conservation, we don't have the sport. So from my perspective, just hear, hear me out on this, in the bass fishing world, if I catch a one and a half pound bass and he's a keeper, great. I can use him in the tournament, but I know he will go back to eventually become a three and a half, four and a half, even bigger than that, that would be beneficial to have in future tournaments. But in the walleye fishing tournaments, I don't know. I've heard mixed reports on this because I'm not as familiar with them. I don't know if they can keep the catch afterwards to be eaten as well as, you know, going to their score or if they are also supposed to be released like bass. But what I do know the similarities are is that they are weighed in a bag just like they are in bass fishing tournaments 
and then that's your score. So it is similar in that aspect. If they are to be kept afterwards, then that's a problem because then a, fi a fish could just be dead and you know, you think nothing of it. You weigh in your dead fish and you take them home to eat them supposedly. Maybe you wouldn't want to eat the fish that Mr. Runyon and Kaminsky are bringing in uh, for obvious reasons. But these guys were taking their catch. They were catching them you know, supposedly in a tournament, and, and honestly, they were catching good sized walleye at that, so I don't know why they felt like they needed to cheat in this case. Maybe they were also going to baskets. So that is a common thing. Fishing cheating, I know there's a lot of people who are probably more interested in this whole thing. Fishing cheating is nothing new at this point. There has been cases over the years, especially at more local levels. People have been found guilty of going out fishing fruit away, catching their fish, and putting them in baskets in secure locations, and then going to just get the fish. That has been done before, but it has also been caught before. It's not really done at a higher level before, though, so that's not something you usually have to worry about in your major events. But what these guys were doing, what Chase and Jake were doing, once they got their fish, they were stuffing lead weight anywhere from 5 to 10, I think I saw even a 12-ounce lead weight is what they were putting into these fish. So they're adding in several pounds. The team who actually won this event, I'm looking at the updated numbers, they had 28 pounds was their weight. But uh, Mr. Kaminsky and Runyon, they had 33 pounds. So they had went a little, huh, a little too much on their, on their weights, if you ask me, because it was significantly over, you know, the gap. And that's not common. So how did someone know they're cheating? Well, it's quite obvious. I'm a fisherman. I can tell you when a fish is lighter than what you're telling me. I can go onto any Facebook group usually and someone will post a picture of like a three pound bass and be like, caught a five pounder guys, look at that. And everyone in the comment section starts lighting old boy up and they're saying, yeah, man, I've seen two and a half pounders all day. Yeah, it's not a five pounder. You know, it's good fish, but it's not a five pounder. So when this guy comes in with these walleye and they take them out, they take a picture, they pose for a picture with him in front of all the other competitors. Someone told the tournament director, hey, that does not look like it weighs that much. And, you know, that was a protest. Tournament director then, you know, made a decision. Come over here. Come over here. Let me see them fish. He takes his knife and ultimately fillets one open. And what does he find? He starts pulling out weights one after the other. And even found fillets of other fish. Force fed these fish other fish. Uh, yeah, yeah, fish are going to eat fish, but they're not going to eat fillets. They're not eating fillets of fish. They cut them open and they found weights. They found, uh, they found fillets of fish. And it was just absolutely awful. Just a horrible disgrace to the sport of fishing. And these guys should never have any reason to ever touch a rod and reel again, in my opinion. You know, it's an ultimately a disgrace to the sport. It's my sport. Uh, it's our sport, if you're watching this and you're a fisherman. And I'm, I'm just appalled at this. And, you know, the fact that they ultimately have gotten away with this, because although it can't be proven that they did this in the past. There is a reported case where they actually failed a polygraph test after winning an event last year, and they still ultimately got to keep the prize. It's really likely that they have cheated in the past in this way. And ultimately, it's just inhumane to do that. You're knowingly giving these fish lead poisoning by doing this. That's so cruel. I mean, this is coming from a Guy who's in a sport where you're fishing, you're putting a hook into a fish's mouth, but you're knowingly going to just put lead in their stomach? I mean, come on, man. How did you think you were going to get away with this for so long, Chase and Jake? I mean, that's just stupid, man. How could y'all be so dumb for so many years? I don't get it. Anyways, that's my rant on that. Uh, it's a really messed up situation in the fishing world, and I just wanted to get on here and talk about it. I know my channel is usually about NASCAR. We're not. We're going to get back to NASCAR stuff after this, but man, I just had to talk about this. I talked about it on my, on my Twitter here recently, and you know, I had a lot of people 
you know, kind of asking, you know, a little not as familiar with the fishing tournament scene, so I can understand that. But, you know, how they got caught is basically fishermen know what they're looking at. I hate that all this went down for the other competitors. This has gained national attention, folks. You know, fishing, yeah, Bassmaster is always going to be probably the biggest one of them all. But a walleye fishing trail hasn't been talked about this much in a long time. And ultimately, hey, Lake Erie Walleye Trail could benefit from this publicity. They publicly have outed one of their biggest winners, and now they're gone. You know, there's no coming back from this. You don't just get to go away and then try to come back. This is not a mistake you can come back from. These guys will not be welcomed at walleye trails nationwide. They will not be welcomed to bass trails nationwide. There is nobody in the outdoor community that's going to welcome in liars, cheaters, and thieves. Because these guys ultimately did steal from the other competitors by doing this. That Those guys might as well sell all their fishing stuff. Because they're done. That is the end of two guys fishing careers. They can go fishing for fun. But the, every time they go, they'll have to be reminded of what they did. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this kind of clears up a little bit about this. If, if you still have any more questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you guys. What a situation going on in the fishing world. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And hey, if you're a NASCAR fan and you, you just found this video because you're also in the fishing, subscribe. You might like some of the other videos on this channel. Anyways, take care. Have a great day. Bye, guys.